Hello, I'm Amin Golgi. Welcome so very much for the Jaga Hair launch. Thank you all for being here. Jaga Hair was a leap of faith. There were 52 simultaneous performances happening from the driveway all the way to my roof. And there's a courage of these artists going in front and putting their bodies out there as their canvases. There's a great degree of courage that goes into performance. There was also courage in the issues they addressed. They addressed issues of gender, sexuality, the patriarchy, a loss of tradition, etc. So this myriad of issues in our great city of Karachi, I think it is extremely important to make things happen here, in Karachi, Pakistan, in our context. Of course, things can happen in London, Berlin, and New York. Of course, our art can be exported there. But I think it is also imperative that we make things happen here for us. Thank you. I'll get to introduce the first panelist, and I'm really thrilled to do that because I have been her fan since get-go. She's amazing, she's a revolutionary, she br brings performance into the public realm. And I would like to ask Shima Kirmani, what, how do you what do you think about performance in the public realm? Thank you everyone for being here, uh, in spite of the heat. <laughs> Today has been a bad day. Yes, I think I really appreciate what Amin just said that we must make things happen here. I think spaces are so important, public spaces where we can step out, out of our bodies, out of our minds, and create uh, a meaningful dialogue with the audience. And I think Jaga Hai, the, which happened last year, yeah, uh, was an amazing experience for all of us who participated in it and uh, took that step of allowing ourselves to be vulnerable um, uh, uh, and put ourselves out there uh, it, with like my performance was in kind, almost like an improvised performance. Of course, there were a lot of other things that had been planned and cal were calculated and um, uh, created over a period of time. I think that kind of interaction that happened um, uh, organically between the performers uh, within the different spaces at the different levels of this building was such a dynamic uh, moment. And uh, that's what artists crave, those moments that we, uh, you know, are rare, um, where you're saying something through your art and your audience is there to catch that moment. Um, and I think that's what we all want. So I think um, just to um, take this conversation forward is that kaash ke aur is kism ki cheeze ho, or maybe if we can make them a little bit more public, um, you know, because we are still within the four walls, the boundary um, of this uh, space. Because I think public interaction is, is, will create another kind of dynamics for all of us, if we can, which we tried to do, if you remember, when we went to that, um, yes, the Lalwala, you know? Yes, and I mean, I actually just stood um, with my group by the pavement, the footpath, and we started performing there, but we had to move away because, you know, people are not used to watching uh, public art. And I think that is what we need to encourage, that it should be accessible to the ordinary public of this city, at least. And that will really be such, such an uplifting experience for everyone, for the artist, as well as for... Uh, um, the, the, the audience. Thank you. Yeah.
Shimaji is being quite humble because she managed to uh, stop all the traffic on main IH Chandigarh Road. Yes. <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce to everyone our next panelist, Baba Sheikh. Um, Baba Sheikh, who doesn't need any introduction, but is an internationally acclaimed filmmaker, academic, musician, and audiovisual installation artist. Working comprehensively for the development of film education in the country, he is based in Karachi and has directed several ad films, documentaries, and short films for the Pakistani, regional, and international markets. He is also part of Chan Tara Orchestra, a performance act that borders between traditional folk and modern contemporary music. In addition to co-writing and directing his debut feature film, he has recently been credited as an executive producer for Pakistan's first ever revenge action thriller, Karma, which we can't wait to see. Um, so, Baba, I'd like to speak to you about um, the line between performance and performing art. Um, do you suppose it is porous? And if so, how so? And if not, how so? Hi, Sarah. I mean, thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone in the audience. Sarah, uh, I get, I jump directly to the point. Uh, I feel that um, the the difference between or the line between performance and performing performing arts is definitely there. It is. It might be porous, but I do feel the The nature, the very sort of temporal nature of performing arts, um, the almost ephemeral sort of quality that it has, that it inculcate, that it, you know it it brings forward from the artist. It's just a plan, and then you bring that performance art or that piece or that installation to the space, and you let. And you let the space be affected, uh, the performance be affected by the space, right? And that's what we've been doing, I, I, I think, in the realm of this gallery for a number of years, thanks to our dear friend Amin here, who we all bring to the space and bring to the But, you know, that's one place of our own, love and love, but in addition to that, that the thing is that performance art is a जगह की निस्बत से उस वक्त फ्लरिश करती है जो उस वक्त थोड़ी देर में आपने ये बात कहनी है 20 मिनट आधा घंटा even though you might have a rough idea or a plan of what you will perform or how you will perform but that very moment that time that moment in time and space sort of governs and outlines how you're supposed to be you know so the, I, I love the sort of also, the fact that it's temporal, it's there, it happens. Kisi ne record kar liya, very good. Nahi kiya, khatam. That is beautiful. And this is done by people, by people who, whose every expression, artist ka har expression, jo hai, wo ek soch samajh ke ek cheez hota hai, ya bagayar soche samjhe hota hai. Lekin hota hai. To ye sare log, जो यहाँ पे चाहे वो मौसीकी से ताल्लुक हो उनका चाहे परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट से हो फिल्म से हो किलिग्राफी से हो पेंटिंग से हो किसी भी चीज से हो दे वर डूइंग देयर थिंग एंड आई आल्सो फील दैट इन द रेल्म ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स एंड बिटवीन द डिफरेंस बिटवीन परफॉर्मिंग एंड परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स इस performing arts, it's going to be different. It's going to be something that comes to your mind, a crazy idea that comes to your mind and you shy away from it. But at performances and places like such, I think it becomes a reality. And um, before, before I say anything else, I'd also like to give credit to the fact that performing arts or installation art ki jaisi cheeze hamariya bilkul ho hai. Thanks to this place and the curators, but or zada oni chahiye. It was a really sad moment for me a few years ago, जब किसी art performance पे एक बहुत बड़ा वावेला हुआ था. But वो वावेला अपनी जगह, but उसके अंदर जो एक बात थी, वो किसी ने किसी prominent शख्सियत ने एक statement दिया था कि 
آپ اگر آرٹ کر رہے ہیں تو آپ پھول پوٹے بنائیں یہ کیا کر رہے ہیں یو نو سو دیٹ واز سم تھنگ دیٹ واز اے مومنٹ دیٹ واز اے سیڈ مومنٹ آئی فیل ان دا ورلڈ آف پاکستانی پرفارمنس اینڈ انسٹالیشن آرٹ بٹ تھینک فلی آئی مین جگہ ہے براٹ اٹ ٹوگیدر یا تھینک یو Hi everyone, uh, I'd like to introduce one of our powerful performers from Jagahe actually. Nagin Sheikh is a Fulbright scholar, art historian, critic and industrial designer. Her research and pedagogy prioritize questions of production in South Asian art, contemporary artists, studios and influences of material complexes on art making in the early modern period. She is particularly interested in languages, notions of materiality and anthropology in art, design history and practice and art criticism. So, Nagin, my question is being, uh, is, is what the jaga hair for art writing in, uh, in Pakistan? We used to have a lot of places, but now not so many. So, that's my question to you. Thank you, uh, Amin, Sarah and Adam for, for this panel. You know, there could be a very straightforward answer to this if there is space for um, art writing, but um, I'd like to be hopeful. Um, I started uh, writing uh, almost over a decade ago and professionally since eight to nine years. And in this time, I've seen um, different uh, publishing platforms uh, continue and stop due to reasons like uh, funding going out or the pandemic and whatsoever and the new places that pop up and want to archive and give writers a voice and there's uh, this there's two things that I've learned in in this long very painstaking journey uh, one there might be opportunities uh, they're hard to find and you have to uh, struggle but then jaga aapko apni banani bhi padti hai so in one way or another you have to put yourself out there and engage with art and release good quality material and this can be many things for many people so for instance for me this was a, a blog that I started when I was a student and I was very excited about design processes and different material markets in Karachi and how you can you don't need to be a designer but you can go out and get things made and interact with craftspersons and so and so forth Um, you have to constantly engage and put things out there and then through this process different spaces or outlets were um, revealed to me with which I engaged. Second, um, space also has to come from within you because writing can be a very solo, uh, isolating kind of a journey. Um, it can be, um, it can drive you um, impatient. Uh, art and writing is something you, you take to bed with. You, you, you wake up to different kinds of thoughts and you might have written and published something and a week later you'll realize that oh, this is what I wrote, I don't think like this anymore. But then the, it's, it's too late, right? Um, so that space has to do with um, evolving and progress from within you. You have to learn with integrity and honesty and keep things plagiarism free. This is something I tell my students, Sarah, all the time. Um, but um, it, it can happen in multiple ways. Um, you should, one should, anybody who wants to write, read as much as possible, interact with people, panels like these, see art, and make sure there is space within where you, where you learn and you continuously evolve, where you grow. Because if you're not growing, you're not going to go very far. You might get noticed with different platforms if, if, there, if there's something. And um, you might get published, you might think you've, you've done something, but if you're not honest and if you're not growing, it's only going to take you just a little bit. And soon you will lose readership and it's going to be a, a, a vapid process with nothing to offer to you. So some kind of space is lurking here and there. You just have to claim it and not let it go. Next panelist, Sophia Lela Afsar, who is also one of our artists who did an extremely riveting performance for us. Um, Sophia Lela is a lawyer turned therapist, multidisciplinary artist, guest lecturer. Their formal qualifications include a diploma in clinical supervision, advanced diploma in counseling, mediation accreditation, and LLB from LSE UK. Lela founded Spectrum Therapy, and mediation in 2016, and has worked with poetry, prose, situation art, and short film. 
In her multidisciplinary practice, she explores isolation, opacity, and non-disclosure of personal information by trans persons, objectification of trans bodies and narratives, utilization behavior by neurodivergent persons, and motionful stillness by autistic folks. Sophia Lella, I'd like to ask you about your experience as an insider, um, how it felt as being a part of Jaga Hai. Thank you, Sarah, for that question. And thank you, Amin, for hosting us um, today. As a, as a performer, one of, uh, as a performing artist particularly, one of your dreams is to get lost in your work. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, I came in with a lot of nervousness and a lot of um, unsurety about how it was going to transpire, particularly because um, this is an environment in which uh, bodies like mine are not commonly seen. So I wasn't entirely sure how it would be perceived. Um, but I was met mostly with love and a lot of care. And it led me to the point of tears. So at, the tears naturally flowed um, at one point. And Shima Ji actually, um, at, she was next to me in, in, in the performance. And sort of we had this lovely embrace in the middle where sort of our two performances sort of merged for a short while until we sort of went our own ways and continued our own performances. Uh, and, and, that, and that is the beauty of performing in a space like this, where the unexpected does sort of un unveil itself. Um, I, when, when I came into the space, I wasn't sure exactly where it would be located. I, I had no idea Shimaji would be right next to me. And so that naturally sort of uh, flowed in, in, in its own way. Uh, and the other thing that really touched me as, as a performer in this space was how people were really hungry to see every single performance. What, what really struck me, there were 52 of us, and, and I think most people who entered the space saw every single performance, which was, which was a testament to how hungry people really are to see perfor performance art in, in Karachi, in Pakistan, uh, how Unfortunately, unusual it can be to have so many performers in one space. Uh, but at the same time, that's also the beauty of it. When you're curating an event like this, you have the opportunity to see so many diff disparate performances, uh, one of which was mine. And, and, and mine challenged the audience in, in the way that I challenged the audience using my own work. Um, but I had a short moment where I actually went through and saw the other performances as well. And the, again, the, 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 not, not only did I get lost in my own work, I also got lost when I was seeing other people's work. And that's, that's really a testament to how well this was uh, curated, and I really thank you for that. Um, I, think, I think that's it. Yeah. I'd just like to add a quick note on that. Um, when she was doing her performance, it was quite emotional, and how you know how Barbara and Nagin both were also saying how space kind of starts to dictate and has its own energy. And I suppose it kind of did that. And it was a certain kind of an atmosphere that was created where uh, she acted like a catalyst uh, in letting other people kind of um, let go of their own emotions as well and started a whole chain reaction in real time. So Zeta Hamdani Mirza is a Karachi-based artist and writer. Her career has spanned art, journalism, strategic communications, and television. Now, I think uh, she's also a friend from the first Karachi Biennale, where and I know we have another friend in the first row. Uh, we all met in 2017, which feels like a long time ago now, also where I mean, Sarah and I met. Um, her writings have also appeared in the books of Pakistan's radioactive decade and informal cultural history of the 1970s published by Oxford University Press, and A Beautiful Despair, The Art and Life of Meher Afroz. So Zera, now it's been quite a while that we've known each other, but you're all, not only you're an artist, but you're an art historian, you write about art, you, you have a good understanding about the trajectory of things in Pakistan in a general sense. So where do you think we are in terms of art spaces and places where we can do performance and things that are a little bit more experimental, just like in the Karachi Biennale, but 
in other senses as well. I think we've, um, we've come a long time since the first Biennale. It's been a while. Uh, we now have three Biennales, I think, in the country. So that's a huge thing because uh, I remember when the first Biennale uh, was happening and Nilifer's right here, we couldn't get funding. People were scared to come to Pakistan. It was a very violent time for Karachi. Uh, this was 2015, 2016. Um, so now, um, and, and while we were researching and thinking about Karachi and talking about the Biennale, uh, one of the things that came up was that Karachi is the third largest art center in the region after Mumbai and Delhi. Uh, and people don't really know that. They don't think of Karachi that way. Um, and other than that, I mean, Lahore, of course, a lot of artists are coming from there. And in, um, in Karachi, it's not as institutional. It's more personality-based. Um, uh, like Amin and, uh, you know, people like Zora Hussain of Chokandi Art Gallery, who's kind of created a space for artists and also nurtured collectors and kind of created this love for art and interest in art. So, so all these people have kind of come together. There, there are many more. I don't, obviously, I don't know everyone and I, I can't list everybody here. Um, and other than that, um, yeah, as you said, like the hunger, the hunger to view the art, that's very much there. Um, another thing at the first Biennale, I remember we couldn't find an Urdu word for performance art. And we didn't know how to explain to journalists what performance art was because they thought, oh, it's like theater or it's like dance. So, so I think um, building that vocabulary and that interest I think we've come a long way and it's a really exciting time. I don't know if they did. Thank you all. Thank you all. Listen, one thing I'd really like to say, you know, when something like Jagahe happens, usually performance artists, you sponsor them, you pay for them. But we have no funding. Everything is done on prayers and scotch tape. So, there's a great energy in the city to make things happen. And even the writers, all of these incredible essays I get from all of these incredible intellectuals, we have no money to pay them. Again, it is the energy of my great city. And the first Biennale was mentioned a lot. And the person who's behind these Biennales is sitting right in front of me. Neela Farooq, a big shout out to her. It is her energy, her balls, her horns that make things like a Biennale happen time and time again. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank you to all the artists. I see some of the artists in the crowd. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shukran, 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 as you say in my native Arabic.